The Necromorphs are some of the scariest monsters in any horror movie, TV show, or video game ever. Their visual design is horrific and hideous. They are disgusting. They occupy this uncomfortable space in the uncanny valley where they look just human enough to look completely wrong. The human psyche has a visceral reaction to things that look human, but that have the wrong proportions, the wrong limbs, that move the wrong way. The Necromorphs are a kind of apex predator. They are fast, they are strong, they are designed to do only one thing and that is to hunt and kill. And they gain strength from death. Like zombies, every time they kill, they grow in number. They turn the corpses of your friends, co-workers, and loved ones against you. The more they kill, the more there are. Until they overwhelm through sheer quantity. Even when you kill them, their dead flesh can be recombined again into something worse. The Necromorphs are also one of my favorite kinds of antagonists, because they are fundamentally inhuman. The vast majority of villains in most stories want basic things like power, money, knowledge, or they are driven by fear or desperation or ambition, or even by something like love, or a need for acceptance or for safety. Whatever is driving a human villain, it is something we the audience can grasp, something we can understand, something we've felt too. What makes an antagonist like the Necromorphs Necromorphs so terrifying and so interesting is their inhumanity. The Necromorphs are an alien intelligence. Its motives are not human motives. It doesn't care about any of the things we care about. We can't negotiate with it because we don't have anything it wants. We can't offer it money or power because it doesn't even know what money or power are. We can't speak to it, can't plead for our lives before it. We don't even know if it recognizes us as alive or what life means to it. To this intelligence, we are just raw material. We are meat. We are a blank canvas upon which it will paint a strange and horrifying new landscape. It's not a mindless animal hunting for food. It is an alien intelligence that wants something. Its motivations are obscure and inscrutable, but everything it does has a purpose. And that's why I love the Necromorph so much. It's the mystery, the unknowable quality to them. Some part of me wants them to stay unknowable, to remain an inscrutable, impossible mystery, because an unsolved mystery is almost always more compelling than a solved one. But the curious part of me just can't help but try to understand them. So in this video, I'm going to go over everything we know about the Necromorphs, to try and understand not just what the Necromorphs literally are and what they literally want, but also narratively, what role do they serve in a horror? Our story. To understand the Necromorphs, first you have to understand the markers. Okay, so what are the markers? Within the Dead Space universe, the Black Marker is an obelisk an ancient artifact of alien origin, incredibly old. Not only older than human civilization, but possibly older than the evolution of life on Earth. 200 years before the events of Dead Space, the Black Marker was discovered on Earth, where it had lain dormant for millennia, and knowledge of its existence was suppressed by the government. This knowledge was suppressed because the Black Marker is dangerous. The marker emits an electromagnetic signal that affects both living people in dead flesh. In living humans, this signal causes paranoia, fear, obsession, violent aggression, suicidal ideation, and hallucinations. Simply put, it spreads chaos and death by turning your own mind against you. Humanity's greatest tool, our minds, our ability to think, to perceive, to understand. The marker undercuts these before a necromorph ever appears, leaving you totally vulnerable and helpless. The marker also affects dead flesh. Through a mix of neurological signal, telepathy, and microscopic pathogen, the marker is 
able to alter the DNA of dead tissue to restructure it and reanimate it. So narratively, within the context of a horror game, what is the purpose of something like the marker? Well, what the marker is doing is stripping characters of their most fundamental tools and strengths. If you can't think, you can't do anything. You cannot fight, you cannot resist. What makes us superior to animals? Obviously, we aren't as strong as lions or gorillas, but we can think, we can outsmart them, we can craft tools. But not when the marker has metaphorically scrambled our egg salad. The marker strips humanity of its supposed superiority. It's a very basic kind of horror, helplessness, vulnerability. Now back to the narrative. To study the marker safely, the government of Earth constructed a replica of the black marker, which is the red marker that appears in dead space. They transported this red marker to a distant and dead planet, Aegis 7, which is the setting of dead space. There, the government performed experiments which resulted in a necromorph outbreak and the creation of a massive necromorph being, the Hive Mind, the final boss of the first game. The government somehow managed to contain this outbreak to seal it within the planet itself, and there it quietly waited for two centuries. In the year 2508, the Ishimura, an interstellar mining vessel, a planet cracker, arrived in the system and through titanic force cracked Aegis 7 open to extract the planet's raw materials, thus accidentally discovering both the marker and unleashing the massive necromorph organism trapped within the barren and abandoned planet. Very quickly, the Ishimura was overrun, and its entire crew of over 1,000 people were dead, their tissue altered and reanimated by the electromagnetic signal sent by the red marker. Now, this explains what the marker is, but does not explain its origin or its ultimate purpose, but we'll get back to that later. First, let's focus on the necromorphs themselves. What are they and what is their purpose? The necromorphs are dead human bodies that have been genetically and physically altered at a cellular level to carry out the marker's will. Their bones have been broken and carved into new shapes. Their skin and muscles have been torn, stripped away, and reattached to different parts of the body. Biological systems deemed unnecessary, like the entire digestive system and most if not all of the brain, have been shredded and repurposed for new functions. The necromorph transformation is an extremely violent and traumatic one. When it's done, very little of the original person remains recognizable, and none of that person's thoughts, emotions, memories, or will survives. Another malfunction. Athea Shimura's in the red. Someone get the door open. <laughs> Chin? Christ, what did that thing do to you? Help me get him to the Kelly. Shoot him. It's not shit. Shoot him! What? <laughs> Shoot him! Chin? No. Help You're gonna kill him. Oh, God. <laughs> This is why shooting a necromorph in the head or body won't kill it. It doesn't have a brain, it doesn't have vital organs in its torso. Its tissue has been transformed almost entirely into muscle and bone, concentrated in its limbs. Destroying those limbs doesn't actually kill the necromorph. You can't kill a necromorph because it's already dead. Instead, you simply prevent it from moving. The game describes necromorphs as recombinant life forms, literally meaning life forms that have been recombined into a new shape. Now, it's not just the marker signal by itself that spreads the necromorph outbreak. There is a contagion, a virus or bacteria, involved in the process which the marker requires to actually physically change a subject's DNA. For the vast majority of the necromorphs you encounter in the game, this is their purpose. They exist to kill people, thus creating more dead tissue, more raw material for the marker to work with. And they exist to spread the infection, the contagion, to the these dead bodies so the marker can actually manipulate them. The slashers, the spitters, the brutes, the crawlers, the leapers, and most if not all of the bosses in the game, all of these exist to kill. That is their only purpose. They hunt and they kill, creating more and more dead flesh for the marker to manipulate. The infector class of necromorph exists solely to infect corpses with the necromorph contagion to aid the marker in the transformation process.
all of these necromorphs have little to no nervous system. They have no thoughts, no will of their own. All of their actions are driven by the marker when the marker is shut down or destroyed. The necromorphs bodies simply fall to pieces. Without the marker they are just dead flesh again. These are not animals, they aren't even really alive. The most accurate way to view a necromorph is as a biological tool, an instrument. The marker is using the necromorphs the same way you or I might use a hammer or screwdriver. They have as much individual will as a wrench does. Or perhaps you could look at them as appendages of the marker. The necromorphs are to the marker as the fingers of your hand are to your brain. Again, they don't have an individual will. They are a tool, a limb, something to be used, something with a specific purpose. But death and infection is only the first step of the necromorph outbreak. There are more specialized necromorphs besides the hunters and killers. For example, there are the Weezers. These generate and spread poisonous gases. The purpose of these gases is to generate a new atmosphere, a new ecosystem. One which is deadly to humans, but which may be necessary for something else to live. And this leads us to the true purpose of the Necromorphs. But first we need to talk about the narrative purpose of the Necromorphs. How does a Necromorph function within the context of a horror story? Whereas the Marker is a source of psychological horror, messing with your head, scrambling your thoughts, blurring the lines between hallucination and reality, the necromorphs are a much more direct form of horror. And that's a good way to think about it. The marker is an indirect psychological source of horror, while the necromorph is a direct monstrous form of horror. The necromorphs are a very visceral kind of horror, the monster, the predator lurking in the dark. It is in the room with you. It is stronger and faster than you and it is going to kill you. You are its prey. Again, just like the marker strips our characters of their mental superiority, the necromorphs strip them of any notion of physical superiority. In the hulking, sparking, shadowy core corridors of the Ishimura, humans are just another prey animal scurrying to safety. I think the best horror stories have a combination of both direct and indirect horror, both a marker and a necromorph. If all you have is a monster, well, I always find that kind of boring. A monster is very simple. It wants to kill you, you defeat it by killing it first. There's not much to it. You need that second source of horror, that indirect horror, to give audiences something to chew on, something to think about. For example, the original Alien movie, a definite inspiration for Dead Space. In that movie, you had the monster, the alien, that visceral direct horror hunting down the crew, but you also had the crashed alien starship, the sense that there was something more to all this, some greater, more horrific purpose that our characters could not understand. It's the combination of the two that makes for great horror. But let's get back to the narrative. I've spoken about the Necromorphs as sort of following the will of the marker, but the marker isn't alive either. It also has no will of its own. The marker is a device, a kind of machine, a tool. It has as much intelligence as a computer program. When you don't understand it, it can kind of seem alive, like it's reacting and thinking. But really, it's just following a set of functions programmed into it by someone else. That someone else is the true alien intelligence, the intelligence that created the original black marker, that sent that black marker marker to Earth before the rise of humanity, that set all of this in motion hundreds of thousands if not millions of years ago. So what is that intelligence and what does it want? Before we answer that question, let's look at the corruption. The corruption is the name of this mass of necromorph tissue that is spreading throughout the Ishimura. It is massive and growing, slowly filling the entire ship. It is foul-smelling, pulsing, writhing, moist, and disgusting. Unlike all other necromorph organisms on the ship, it never attacks you. There is some debate and uncertainty among the fanbase surrounding the corruption. What it is, what its purpose is. So what I'm going to express here is just a personal theory, not an absolute truth. I believe this growing 
mass of flesh is the purpose of the necromorph outbreak. The creation of this mass of flesh is the ultimate function of the marker. This mass of flesh is the end state for all of the necrotic flesh the necromorphs infect and collect. In the first game, the characters describe the corruption as a habitat changer, like it's creating a new ecosystem in which the necromorphs can thrive. But I think the characters are misunderstanding what they're seeing. Living people affected by the marker's mind-altering power, those who see hallucinations generated by the marker, often repeat this phrase, make us whole. You'll see this phrase all over the place in all of the games in the series. Scribbled on the walls, on monitors, in hallucinations, repeated by a wide variety of different characters. This phrase, make us whole, refers to convergence. Convergence is an event triggered by the marker in which all infected necrotic flesh is gathered and merged together into a massive reborn living being. This is the ultimate purpose of the marker. Remember, the black marker was discovered on Earth of alien origin, meaning some alien intelligence sent it to Earth. A convergence event on Earth would mean all biological tissue on the entire planet being collected and merged together being made whole, being made into something new. In the first game, the characters think this mass of flesh is the creation of a new ecosystem. I think it's actually the creation of a new life form. The necromorphs individually aren't alive. They're just tools or appendages of the marker, while the marker itself isn't alive either. It's just the tool of some unseen alien intelligence crafted hundreds of thousands to millions of years ago for this purpose, for convergence, to create a new life form from our dead flesh, a massive life form, an alien life form. This is not rebirth, this is procreation, this is reproduction. The whole purpose of all of this, all the death, the horror, the destruction, the violence, the transformation, is the birth of a new life form. So what sort of new life is being born here? In the third game in the series, this alien intelligence was finally revealed. They are called the Brethren Moons. They are planet-sized sentient beings. In incomprehensibly old, wielding incomprehensible power, and just generally all around incomprehensible to human understanding. They are the creators of the markers, and while the Brethren Moon's greater purposes are inscrutable, the purpose of the markers can be understood. Again, it is procreation. This is the process by which new Brethren Moons are born, a reproductive process which lasts millennia, which involves the death of untold numbers of intelligent beings, entire species, entire biospheres, which births an alien intelligence beyond our understanding. That's what's happening on the Ishimura. That's what the necromorphs and the marker are doing. This is a story about birth, a birth which began many, many years ago, but is only taking definitive shape right now. A birth which requires our flesh, our bodies for its raw materials. The creation of an alien being compared to whom we are like mindless and terrified insects, scurrying away from a bulldozer digging up the foundations of a soon-to-be skyscraper, compared to whom we are nothing and irrelevant. This is true horror. To these beings, your life does not matter, only your flesh, because your flesh will form the organs of its newborn infant. Now, narratively, how does this greater purpose function within the context of a horror story? One of my favorite books is War of the Worlds. As a kid, I read it dozens of times. The War of the Worlds is about an alien invasion set in turn-of-the-century England. The turn-of-the-century was a time when the English believed themselves the premier civilization in the world. They believed themselves superior to everyone. They had the biggest empire, the biggest ships, and the biggest egos. The book War of the World struck a chord by asking, what if all that superiority could be taken away at the snap of a finger? What if the English faced a threat just as technologically advanced to them as they were to the native peoples of the lands they colonized? In dead space, humanity is ascendant. Humanity has conquered the stars, has the ability to destroy entire planets, has the biggest ships and the biggest egos. But in the face of the marker and the necromorphs and the alien intelligence behind them, all our achievements, all our intellect is worth nothing. We are not even natives to be enslaved or colonized. We don't matter. We are like ants being run over by the bulldozer during the paving of a new highway. This is cosmic horror, a confrontation with mankind's place in the face of the enormity of a compassionless universe in which we do not matter. In the Dead Space series is one of the most effective examples of cosmic horror anywhere in video games. Thank you.